Hello and welcome to the third video in our series on insect pest exclusion practices. This video describes the process of making small net house and low tunnels for pest reduction. Watch the earlier videos in the series to learn about basic principles and construction of large net house along with research data on insect exclusion. There are three recommended IPM approaches for sustainable systems, and they are especially applicable in small plot agriculture and urban farms. Level 1, systems-based practices like growing pest-tolerant varieties and trap cropping, and Level 3, use of birational insecticides, have been discussed separately in other training modules on Alabama Vegetable IPM website. This video discusses insect pest exclusion methods suitable for community gardens and urban farms that use small plot intensive agricultural practices. Insect pest exclusion is not a new concept and it is not the silver bullet solution to all pest problems. Many exclusion practices like the use of row covers, plant collars, and fruit bagging are popular among gardeners. The main idea is to block insects from feeding and or reproducing on host plants. This video provides more research-based information about the benefits of small net houses and low tunnels. Designs can vary greatly depending on target insect and materials available. Before developing a strategy, we recommend viewers to first think about pests you want to exclude and length of protection needed. Insect exclusion practices have two basic features, design and material, that have to be in balance for best results. Design of a pest exclusion system should be sturdy and materials should be low cost for wide scale use. Also think about possible side effects of using a screen. For example, using 40 or 50 mesh insect net can exclude small insect pests, but it will also exclude beneficial insects and pollinators. Weed control is another limitation due to raised temperatures in the net house. Following slides will provide results from various design and material studies completed in Alabama. Net House is a popular pest exclusion system for vegetable farmers in many developing countries. However, it is still a novel concept for many producers in the U.S. Alabama Extension has been evaluating insect pest exclusion systems since 2010. In one of the first large-scale studies, pest reduction was highly significant for moss, stink bugs, leaf-footed bugs, thrips, and white flies when a 50 mesh white screen was used. That was an expensive project which sparked interest in designing low-cost systems for pest exclusion in gardens and small farms. This low-cost structure is the mini version of our large net house discussed in video 1. This low-cost net house used all locally available materials and allowed one person to stand inside. It took about two hours to build an 80 square foot structure after installing the drip irrigation system and planting tomatoes. We used Dalen Garden Net folded twice over to make the pore size half inch by half inch. It is important to properly anchor plastic or wooden poles to the ground using camping hooks. The nylon cords connecting the poles helped distribute wind pressure and also supported the fabric above the canopy. We planted detriment tomato varieties inside this net house and had good yields. The Dalen net house was moderately effective in reducing moth numbers quantified using sticky pheromone traps. Year 2010 was an outbreak year for armyworms, but we observed reduction in moth numbers with the net. Leaf-footed bugs could not pass through the half-inch opening, but brown stink bugs could. Weekly treatment of pyrethrin purchased from retail store was used to reduce stink bug feeding, but it was difficult to apply insecticides uniformly inside plant canopy. It is important to control weeds around the structure to prevent buildup of pests. Interestingly, pollinators and beneficial insects were seen landing on the net and then crawl into the structure and vice versa. To give viewers a better proof of concept, here is a short description of a study done on two farms in East Alabama where squash bugs were in outbreak status in 2011. We tried the simplistic Dalen garden net along with one foot high wall of white row cover at the bottom of the structure as pointed out by the red arrow. Squash bugs like to crawl on the ground and hide under leaves, so a wall was included. About 10 plants were included in the net house, and all squash bugs were removed in order to measure the reinfestation level. 
10 adjacent plants were maintained as control. The study showed that squash bugs were able to reinfest the squash inside the net house, but the invasion was delayed by about two weeks. Plants in the net house produced fruits for two extra weeks, whereas the crop outside succumbed to the pest. The reinfestation levels at four weeks was still half the level compared to the unprotected crop. Both test locations gave similar results. Reduction in adult squash bug numbers also mean reduced number of eggs per plant over three weeks. Early season insect protection is often critical in the southeast where plant establishment is a problem. Here is another low frame net house that was used to evaluate super light insect barrier commonly available on many gardening websites for early season pest management in tomatoes. This fabric is available in 8 foot by 20 by 48 or 96 foot pieces from the manufacturer and is very convenient to handle. It allows 90% light penetration. This fabric can be used in a variety of ways including U-frames or low tunnels. This graph shows the effectiveness of the super light insect barrier compared to many commercial and garden insecticides. The fabric was able to reduce about 60% early season flea beetle and aphid infestations without the need of any insecticide. This level of insect protection was similar to more expensive insecticidal material we tested. This positive effect was observed for over three week period and the fabric was removed thereafter once the tomatoes were well established. Due to warm microclimate inside the fabric, it is important to keep weeds under check. Here are some variations to a low cost net house. This project is being carried out in collaboration with the Bay Area Food Bank of Mobile, Alabama. Both these designs are very suitable for community gardens that have raised bed production system. A fact sheet containing details of the construction process is available on the IPM website. Here's a video that shows quick insect net installation system for raised beds using half inch PVC pipes. Participant can be seen laying down pieces of super light fabric on both sides of the bed and tucking it under the PVC frame. This can be done with steel mesh also. The pieces of fabric were joined together at the top with minimum overlap to avoid shading. The entire structure is bolted to the wooden baseboards. Fabric at the end walls was weighed down to close the unit. It is best to lay out the drip irrigation and transplanting done before putting the fabric on. With the extra heat trapped inside, weed control is a constant battle. According to our observations, a single layer of fabric does not cut out too much sunlight or trap too much heat. Once the fabric is taken off, tomatoes will rapidly grow in fruit. For producing insect pollinated crops, Producers can release bumblebees inside long net houses or simply roll up the sides during daytime for foraging bees. Closing the net house at night can reduce majority of the night flying moss from reaching the crop. Net houses open up many avenues for integrating other sustainable agriculture practices. If you are using shade cloth as a net in a low tunnel or high tunnel, then it may be possible to release commercially available predatory insects like lady beetles and lace wings inside the net to reduce caterpillars, aphids, thrips, and whiteflies. Contact a regional extension agent to learn more about beneficial insects or attend a vegetable IPM training meeting near you. Net house is not the silver bullet solution to all insect problems. Careful choice of material and design are important factors to successful management of target pests. Please consult Alabama Vegetable IPM website for further reading about insect exclusion practices. We thank the funding agencies, industry partners, and cooperating producers for supporting the Alabama Vegetable IPM program. Please subscribe to the Alabama IPM Communicator newsletter by visiting the Vegetable IPM website.